what I see is that there's a bunch of different studies that show quite consistently that sa- high saturated fat diets, even in eucaloric conditions at energy balance, if you feed someone, a human, a lot of saturated fats, even if they're at energy balance, you can drive up their liver fat, which to my understanding is a key contributor to insulin resistance in the liver, to increased triglycerides or VLDLs, increased blood glucose as a result of that insulin resistance, and a lot of these different sort of um, metabolic consequences. And whereas with fructose and, and glucose, these simple sugars, we're only seeing them increase liver fat in a hypercaloric context. And that makes me wonder a couple of things here. How much of fructose and glucose are affecting liver fat comes down to calories versus the sort of inherent properties of these sugars. And sort of secondly, why most of the conversation around metabolic health is focused on carbs and low carb diet, where I see very, very little talk about saturated fats. Okay. So let's just first begin by saying that in the world of obesity, uh, I think both of us agree that fructose and saturated fats are evil and uh, that they are contributing to obesity. And our work suggests this, and I think you've just summarized this, and also to fatty liver. And when you combine fructose and uh, saturated fat, you get much worse outcomes than if you do fructose with alone or fat alone. And, um, and, and the, you know, like in, in studies where high fat is given alone, we got to be very careful with the human studies, right? Because there's so much sugar and fructose in the, in the population that a lot, a lot of people are, are already leptin resistance. A lot of people already are eating a lot of fructose. And so when you just do um, manipulation where you add saturated fat or you know, it's not like you're you're comparing saturated fat to to no fructose. They're still eating a lot of fructose, and so it's very hard not to show that it's not still a combination of the two. The only way, Simon, we're going to prove this is like when there's a, a way to block fructose metabolism, and then what we can do is we can see a saturated fat really still increases the fat level that you think it does. Uh, you know, in the abs- when fructose metabolism is really blocked. Because like in our studies where we were giving saturated fat, a high fat, high sugar diet, if we blocked um, fructose metabolism, there was no inflammation in the liver. There was no fibrosis. Um, you know, there was fat, but it wasn't, it wasn't causing, you know, a NASH or cirrhosis or anything like that. So, so is your hypothesis there that saturated fat is only a problem for liver fat, hepatic fat, in the context of a background diet that has a high amount of fructose? I think so. And, and let's take a look at some examples. You know, people who go on a low carb diet uh, can eat a fair amount of fat, and but we don't really. At least I'm, I'm not aware. I think there are some cases where they will get fatty liver. And especially if the, if the fat in their diet is high in saturated fat, they might get fatty liver. But certainly a low-carb diet is associated, you know, tends to be associated with, uh, you know, not gaining weight, not getting fatty liver, not getting visceral fat. Um, and so... Uh, there must be something about the carb, the carb restriction that's helping this. That's not to say that saturated fat's not a problem. Saturated fat is a huge problem, uh, as you pointed out. It increases apolipoprotein B. It, it increases LDL cholesterol. Um, it can be pro-inflammatory. You know, uh, it can lead to atherosclerosis. Um, it can raise fat in the liver. So it's, it's not like um, saturated fat is good. And I, I definitely, in your camp, that we should be restricting saturated fat and animal fats are particularly high in saturated fat. So, I mean, it's a, it's a good argument. 
I think this is also one of the reasons why like the Mediterranean diet done well yeah. is, is associated with very low risk of a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, yes. Just on that point though about ketogenic diets, I, th- I think definitely – Um, And this brings us back to like what's better for for weight loss, ketogenic diets or high-carb diets and we've got that diet fit study we spoke about previously. I would agree with you that ketogenic diets can be good for reducing liver fat Um, but we have to be careful because this can be confounded by weight loss. A lot of those papers are are looking at liver fat in the first six months and of course we know that if you lose a significant amount of weight, pretty much no matter what you eat, you're going to reduce your liver fat. But when we when we sort of pan out and look at more twelve to twenty four months, I mean we start to see people regaining weight on all diets. And when we go a bit further, I think low carb diets in the first six months, you do see they have an advantage for weight loss. I would be the first person yeah. to put my hand up and say that. But as you sort of go out a bit further, it it becomes actually quite a level playing field with other diets, and you'd see adherence drops off. My issue or my questions there are okay. As that person is adopting the high saturated fat keto diet and losing weight, great, the the liver fat goes down. But we know that they're going to regain weight. They're going to be at weight maintenance or in a hypercaloric situation eventually. How good is this diet that is just packed with saturated fats from butter and and meat, et cetera? So first off, some people on a keto diet will eat so much saturated fat that their cholesterol can go up into the 500 range. And there, there are even cases... There were two cases way back in the 1930s where these Arctic explorers went on what they thought was an Inuit diet, but it was a much higher fat diet. And their cholesterols, their blood became like Pemic and uh, their cholesterols went to 800. So you can, you can do a keto diet the wrong way, that's for sure. Um, and another thing is that, um, you know, uh, meat proteins uh, in particular – and especially things like organ meats, and so they can raise uric acid. And, um, and so uh, just b- by the purine content, and interestingly, high purine vegetables do not raise uric acid because they, it's a different type of purine um, that, that is concentrated in the plant. So, and when, if the uric acid goes up, that will activate um, the, these pathways, you know, to, to try to hold on to, uh, you know, to try to, to activate the switch. And um, it, they can't work very well because there's not a lot of glucose to turn to, to fructose. But as a person on a low-carb diet over time, you know, oftentimes they, they lighten up and they start eating more carbs. And now they, you know, now they can convert those carbs to fructose. And, uh, you know, so I think that um, that – there's more than one way to get to the fructose. It isn't just, you know, from high glycemic carbs and sugar, but even umami foods can drive uh, fructose production to some extent. 